I think is the extreme sense of deprivation, the extreme sense of helplessness. Uh, for, for any other woman, somebody who's lost a husband, lost a brother, lost a father, you could justify it maybe easily, easier than for her. Because we all, we all humans, we love our life. And especially for her to be so comfortable relatively in that society with the little children, with so much responsibility, to be so bravely take this step, uh, it, it should tell the world the, the, the deeper game, what's going on, how, how the torture cells, the rape cells that Pakistan military is running in Balochistan, what they're doing to our women and children and the elderly, it's unbelievable. It's human rights violations and you know the gross violations to another level. We're dealing with bedias, we're not dealing with human beings. So, yeah, I mean, this, other than the fact that she blew herself up and fights a terrorist act and unacceptable, what must be going through her, her mind when she took this decision? And it was not an um, impulsive decision, as we're coming to find out. So, yeah, it should be a wake-up call for all of us. So we have to try to find another way before this thing becomes uh, widespread. Uh, first of all, we have to go into the background of the Baluch struggle for independence. Um, such attacks or the fight against establishment or the enemy has been going on for the past 75 years since occupation. The, the scope and the intensity and the, the modus of operandi has changed over time. Uh, first, suicide bomber and a female Baluch lady it's the first time that this has happened, but it was inevitable. In the last uh, 70 years, with the way the Pakistani establishment is uh, conducting its human rights violation, or as Amnesty International calls it, slow motion genocide or ethnic cleansing of the Baloch people, and then complete denial of their illegal occupation of Balochistan, it was inevitable they would come to this. Although this is not the first uh, suicide attack on the establishment, so the Pakistani or the occupying forces. Many have happened in the past, but there have been men. No attack that uh, targets civilians and innocent people can be justified by any sane person. But at the same time, we have to understand their point of view. We can't justify it, but we should at least attempt to understand it. The Baloch youth are not the youth of the 70s and 60s, when even in Karachi, they did not know that in my tribal area, Maristan, there was a military operation carried out by Bhutto where people were thrown from helicopters and women were raped and there were uh, rape camps the slaves they used to keep in those times. But the news did not travel even to Karachi. <clears throat> now Baloch youth are well aware of what's happening in, in the neighboring country like India, how much progress the, uh, the education level of people and the liberties people enjoy. And we are kept like sheep. We are kept like slaves over there. There's no education institutions in Balochistan, but whenever they come to places like Karachi or Lahore or anywhere else, there's racial profiling, which has intensified since this attack. Again, I would like to put this on record as well. Racial profiling. If they're Baloch, they're taken aside, they're interrogated mostly, they're taken out of these institutions. In Balochistan, there's no education institutions or liberties uh, and outside when they go. So what would the Baloch youth do? We have to... The leadership has been eliminated. There is no leadership. Who, do, who would you call the leader of the Baloch people or the Baloch youth today? Nobody. They've been killed, eliminated, or they're not on the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they're in a dire situation. You must understand from their point of view. Violence is never the way forward. Violence breeds more violence, and that breeds more violations. It's, it, it leads to more destruction. Uh, history is witness to that. So we can't say as the Baloch will achieve any th anything to violence. I think when I was representing, uh, since I've been barred from representing the United Nations Human Rights Council with the help of the Chinese and the weakness of the Swiss, we were always advocating some kind of step-by-step -step solution to the Balochistan's occupation. Equal rights. Give people rights, give people the living space, the breathing space, so they won't ask for such demands as, uh, as uh, uh, the liberation of Baluchistan. The European Union is a prime example. People are coming together, the regions are coming together and making pacts to, in, in, in order to flourish financially, economically, and socially. 
people don't want to be isolated. The, the, the Second World War is over. People are not that into the nationalistic uh, uh, domains. But no, Pakistan and unfortunately, the international powers are not taking us seriously. Unfortunately, when something like this happens, everybody wants to talk about the Baloch or how bad it is. It has been very bad for so long. If it was addressed, if there was, for example, a referendum was carried out in Baluchistan, why is referendum such a bad thing? I don't know. Pakistan is so bent upon its democratic institutions, so proud of its bogus facade of being a democratic country. Carry out a referendum. It's asking for all this thing in uh, Kashmir. Why not Balochistan? Give people their rights, their due rights, and such things will stop. Uh, I've been labeled all kinds of terrorist organizations and my connection with them. I've been working in the United Nations Human Rights Commission, then Council, all these years. The reason I was banned from Switzerland was because I was exposing the nexus of China and Pakistani establishment in the genocide of the Baloch people and the exploitation of the Baloch resources. Nothing to do with me being associated with any militant organization. Yes, my father was a nationalist. He struggled from the 50s, 60s, 70s, up until he was killed in 2014. The, the, the coward uh, military killed him in the hospital in Karachi. Till then, he struggled for the rights and the independence of the Baloch people, and so are we. But I chose the path of the United Nations, but I was blockaded by them. I was banned by them, and the only pretext they could use. And when they stopped me in Zurich, the interesting thing is they said, Mehr, uh, Mehran, Bloch, like the Punjabis call us Bloch. And even we spelt it like Bloch. And my date of birth was wrong. My place of birth was in Pakistan, which is totally wrong. I think, uh, again, he can uh, speak for himself about being the head of the BLA or not. I don't think he was in prison in the United Kingdom on the basis of the accusation that he was the leader of the BLA and the British courts uh, freed him. It's a democratic country. It's not the Pakistan that you uh, pay the judges to convict him wrongfully. They, they had <coughs> freed him and he had no connection with the BLA. So I do understand uh, why people are very easy to jump on the bag wagon of bang, uh, blade, uh, connecting us with uh, terrorist organizations because my father is a nationalist leader, a renowned Baloch nationalist leader. And he always said that, yes, Pakistan will not give you the rights on a platter because he struggled for 40 years asking them to give equal rights. And then he realized rights have to be taken. So people can interpret that in whatever language or whatever meaning they can ascertain from that. As far as my relationship with my brother goes, that's a personal matter. That's a family matter. I would not like to discuss this on a, on a media platform. To be honest, the demands, all the speeches that we made in the United Nations, the demands have to be within the parameters of the international law, within the parameters of the United Nations Charter. The demands are as a civilized community, our rights should be respected. And the reinstatement of our sovereignty, we were illegally occupied by Punjabi Pakistan. That should be acknowledged. I know they are the perfect mercenary for the United States and the, uh, China and other major powers right now. So therefore, they would like to turn a blind eye to what Pakistan is doing in Balistan. How come Ukraine, everybody's crying out loud about Ukraine. Balistan is not different from Ukraine. It's been occupied by the neighbor. So that's the, the, the prerequisite, the bottom line. Once you accept that, then we can build up on the scenario. Then we can build up on how we can remedy this issue. But when people, when I speak to the common Pakistanis, oh, Balochistan, this is our province. Uh, that, that's painful. Not to acknowledge even our, our, our condition, it, it's painful. And therefore, you will have reactions like this. The new generations, as I say, they're, they're connected with the world. They feel really... Uh, let down by the world and the international community. I feel let down by the international community. I think I, for 17, 18 years, a very, in a civilized manner, I tried to portray our Balistan question to the world. And what do they do? Link me to a terrorist organization and ban me from speaking to the United Nations. That's shameful. And everybody else is silent upon this. So India is can play the pivotal role and should play the, uh, play the pivotal role because India is not just this economic power. It's, a, it's not a regional power. It is a, a big, uh, it has a big status on the international uh, arena, but it does not uh, use its power. It does not use its influence. 
Pakistan as a little frog jumps up and down for Kashmir everywhere, which is an unjust cause. As uh, yesterday I was giving an interview with some Pakistani journalists said, well, there's no international uh, United Nations resolutions on Balochistan, so that's not an international issue. So <laughs> India should play its role. And Mr. Modi in 2016, when he spoke, there was a breath of fresh air for a lot of Baloch, and they thought at last uh, sacrifices not, have not gone in vain. The India, as we always pin, pin our hope on India, on nobody else. I think the Western world, you can see how sincere they are, how they run away from Afghanistan. I don't think they will come and help us. So we do pin our hopes on India, and I hope uh, India being a democratic country with a free press, people like yourself can raise the awareness of the Balochistan issue. And inshallah, one day, the government will take proactive, proactive steps. The Baluch, United Baluch Army and the Republican Army that you said, there's two gentlemen who are giving their pictures everywhere. There are two individuals who have said we've joined hands and this is our new organization. I think you should ask those questions to them. As far as Madis and the Buktis and my brother-in-law goes, we are neighboring tribes. We have historical ties with each other. Being a brother-in-law makes me even closer to him a lot more. He's a great friend of mine. He's an honorable member of the Baloch community. My father had great respect for him at his age. He's a young man, but very determined, groomed perfectly by his uh, grandfather, Akbar Khan Bukti. We, the Baloch, are very proud of him. And uh, I feel very sorry for him as well, how the Swiss have uh, cocooned him there for the past 14 years on the instructions of Pakistan and China. Just very sad. I, I really hope we went to the Indian consulate in Geneva about four or five years ago, asked that if we could at least get him refuge in India, where at least he could uh, ex speak to his mind, help the Baloch cause. We got no such luck. So I again appeal to the Indian government, please see if you can do something for him. He's a great friend of mine and is a great leader of the Baloch nation. We have a real shortage of leaders nowadays, and therefore the youth might be misled into doing many things that is not acceptable internationally. Pakistan, poor thing, doesn't have the mental capacity to use anybody. It only gets used and then disposed. So, no, China is uh, using Pakistan. China wants Gwadar to be a listening post, or Baluchistan to be a listening post for the world's uh, movement in the Gulf of uh, Arabia. So, and but China is a cutthroat capitalist. China does not want uh, to lose people. It does not want to indulge itself in a war. Uh, so China will definitely reassess its calculations that it had done to One Belt, One Road and this uh, Guadalupe project. From the year 2000, when it was initiated, the Baloch leadership had raised objections, but China uh, was too bloodthirsty to understand that because it's achieved its goals in uh, East Africa, West Africa, you name it, wherever they've gone, they've raped, pillaged, stolen, plundered, and ran back to China. So Pakistan is the perfect playground for them because Pakistan has leased and occupied territory, Balochistan, to the Chinese. So Pakistan has no love loss. What the Chinese, what are they doing in Sandak? What are they doing? How much copper, gold, and uranium they're stealing? Or how much fish they're, they're stealing from Balochistan? Pakistan has no love loss. Pakistan knows as in Hindi, you say, Ek din dum ke baiga, baage ga Punjabi from Balochistan. So it's as, as, as far as, as long as it lasts, they're happy to let the Chinese plunder our wealth.